Hey YouTube, today we got a great project for you. We're going to build a $15, 15 minute Wi Fi weather station that uses ThingSpeak and the ESP8266 along with the ESP Easy firmware. So here we've got the star of the show, the BME280 temperature, humidity, pressure sensor. We've got a 0.96 inch OLED. I squared C display, the BME28 is also I squared C, and an ESP01 of the uh, AI Thinker 1024K variety. Uh, we've got a few other items here. We'll take a look at our materials. We've got some hookup wire, we've got a slide switch, a press button switch, two 10K resistors. Oh, don't worry about that. Uh, got a USB TTL cable here with some jumpers on it and a 3 volt power supply. The USB cable is in fact 3 volt uh, compatible but it does not put out enough power so don't even mess around with it. Some people say oh yeah you just hook up one of these things and uh, everything's great. Yeah sure great. No don't do it. Don't even mess with it. It's silly. It doesn't make sense. Get the right power supply. Do it right the first time. So we've only got 15 minutes here as I said. Let's dive right in. I'm going to drop these items into the breadboard. And let's take a look at what we're first going to accomplish here. Our first goal is going to be load up the ESP Easy framework. We've got a few connections we're going to make. Chip enable is going to be pulled up to VCC. Uh, reset pulled up to VCC as well as adding a switch that will pull to ground. GPIO uh, zero is going to have a switch that pulls to ground and this is used for uh, telling the bootloader to load into uh, flash mode so you can write the firmware. Let's get started. So I've already got my uh, ESP connected to one of these DuPont cables and I've got it laid out here so it matches these. I'll pull them all out here. So first thing we'll do is uh, pull on our pull up onto chip enable. We're not going to take any shortcuts here today. I'm going to show you step by step. Anyone can do this. This is so simple. Anyone. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So you're going to get to watch me play with the breadboard a little bit. So we've got chip enable. We're good on that. Let's wire up reset is going to be our push button switch. And we're going to take this to ground. Next we're going to do our flash switch again to ground. Up to GPIO zero which is in this case the third pin our green one so the cost on this I'm gonna assume you already have a few things laying around and I'm not gonna include stuff like the uh, USB TTL cable obviously I'm not gonna include uh, the hookup wire and resistors the ESP you can even get it on eBay for like four bucks or something so the cost here it's kind of whatever you want it to be with regard to extra components. You can switch out the OLED for a typical LCD type display, whatever you want to do. So now we've got our uh, USB cable hooked up. This is a prolific PL2303 style. Let's go ahead and hook that up to the computer. And I'm going to hook up my power now. So I've got this uh, 3 volt, 700 milliamp power supply. Hook that right up to our power bus. And with any luck, VCC and ground on my ESP I won't be in business. First I'll do ground and then VCC. Well, look at that. 
you can't see that. Look at that. We got our red light. So everything looks good here. If I press my reset button, I should see the little blue light blink. And what's happening there is the blue light indicates uh, UART traffic. And so in this case, it's actually the bootloader responding with a little message, hey, I'm here. So now we can proceed with uh, flipping the switch. So we're in flash mode, reset at one time, and let's head over to the computer to write some firmware. So no shortcuts here. I do not even have the serial cable driver installed. Shout out to Adafruit here. If you need this cable, you should buy it from Adafruit. It's only 10 bucks. What a deal. They're just a great company. A lot of contributions to their GitHub for how to set this stuff up. Amazing articles. And we can use them right now just to get this little driver. So why not? It's awesome. These guys are great. 10 bucks. Do it. While we're waiting for that, we're also going to go ahead and download the ESP Easy framework, uh, firmware rather. So that's this website, ESPH266.nu. It's a wiki. We want to go to the main page down at the bottom, is where you can download it. And I'm going to talk fast because I really want to do this in 15 minutes, so I apologize for that. This is going to be awesome though. So we now have the serial driver installed. I'm going to pull out and plug in the USB one more time. Let's go ahead and take a look at computer manager. Right click a computer, go to manage, and we can see in the device manager what our COM port is. COM3, there we go, prolific, PL2303. So now we have our ESP firmware here. Let's go ahead and extract that. I'm also going to download PuTTY. PuTTY can be used for a, a serial terminal. And the ESP Easy framework outputs all kinds of really useful debugging messages. And it just tells you what's going on. So you really get a good idea of just what's happening throughout this process. <clears throat> We'll come back to that. So I've got my ESP Easy Framework extracted here. I just gotta go ahead and run this little flash batch file. And so it wants to know what COM port. Number three, flash size. In this case, we have the black model. It's five. It's a 1024. If you have the blue one, it's a 512. And you have the big ESP 12 model. That's gonna be the 4096. So the build is the file we just downloaded. In this case, it's R120. So we're gonna put 120. And no dice. Why no dice? I'm going to go ahead and click the reset button. Try it again. Port 3, 1024, 120. No? Really? Nothing? Really? Everything looks good. Everything looks so great here. Do I have receive and transmit properly crossed? TX should go to RX, RX to TX. Looking good. Looking good there. Am I in firmware boot mode? Do I have my pins correct on the switch? Maybe I do not. Maybe I do. Let's try this again. Port 3, 10, 24, build 120. There we go. Beautiful. Always watch your connections, and you can see the UART lights going crazy because firmware is being transferred. I'm going to go ahead and get PuTTY ready here because as soon as this reboots, it starts doing some stuff that's worth seeing. ESP Easy has some kind of like a initial boot process that'll erase the flash, and also there's a bug to be aware of. So let's just give that a minute. So I did not connect the uh, I squared C connections for anything. 
Okay, now that's done. Let's go ahead and open Putty. What do we got here? Anything? Anything? Okay, maybe you won't get the bug. I think I already loaded the firmware in here, but I'm going to go ahead and click. I'm going to turn off flash mode, hit reboot. Let's take a look at our COM port here. It looks good. No SSID, I squared C, boot OK. So no SSID means we're now broadcasting and we are ready to connect up with our Wi-Fi. So if you go to back to the ESP Easy uh, website, there's a section here on tutorials on flashing the firmware. Good stuff. And then down at the bottom it says ESP uh, Easy Setup. So this tells you it's going to be broadcasting on ESP0 and the password or key to the Wi-Fi network is config ESP. So let's take a look at that. Got my iPad here. I'm going to go ahead and go to the Wi-Fi section, ESP0, there it is. It's password con. Big E S P. Yep. Join. Okay, so now there's something weird that's going to happen. It's detecting that it doesn't have internet and it's saying, hey, I'm pretty sure you want internet. We're going to take care of that for you. We don't want to do that. So we're going to cancel. We're going to say use without internet. And you'll see why in just a second. So if I click the information here, we can see the ESP has the IP address 192.168.4.1, and we can now type that into our browser. And look at that. Now we're connected to the ESP device, and it's listing the local Wi-Fi networks for connection. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and select my 2z.com one with the logical password of 2z rocks and go ahead and connect so right now the ESP is attempting to connect to that network and if we go back to our putty we can see yep it's connecting it's connected this is still counting down although we pretty much know it's connected but this will tell us now what IP address it just received and that's the main reason that I don't like using the other uh, little captive portal pop-up because it doesn't give you this IP and then this is a link to take you right to that thing. So if I switch back to my, my settings, it's no longer broadcasting on ESP0. So I'm connected back to my normal Wi-Fi network and we can switch back to the browser and click on this link. And sometimes I've found that it gets a little flaky here, and you do need to just go ahead and reboot the uh, ESP again. Because we're in a bit of a time crunch here. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to click my red button again. So we can see on the putty terminal again, Wi-Fi is connecting. Wi-Fi is connected. Great. Now I'm going to stop this. Click on my link again. There we go. So the reboot kind of kicked it into gear. Okay, now we're ready to wire up our devices. I'm going to go to the hardware tab here and just go ahead and pre-configure our uh, I2C to use GPIO 0, SDA GPIO 2 for SCL, and submit that. If you look back at our terminal, it says settings are saved. So let's go back to the breadboard and wire those up. So we've got ground. We've got one, two, three, four is GPIO2 is SCL, SCL. 
so easy to do this stuff. I gotta just match them up. People that make these modules are freaking geniuses. Shared one for the. What am I doing here? Is that right? To reset this one. Yep. SDA. 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 On the BME. Then let's bring down some power. Let's carry over our power and ground. Those colors are getting out of hand. Mixing up all my colors. It's no good. Okay, BCC on here, ground on here. We should be in good shape. Uh, ground. Ground. What? We have a ground. What am I doing? Shit. I just short them together. Great. Okay. That looks good. So, we now have all of our I2C connections available, and we just need to go back to our ESP Easy and see what's going on. So, I'm going to just do this on the computer this time. We have 10.89.2.55. If you go to the Tools tab, I click on I, I squared C scan. No I squared C devices found. Again, reboot. Click the button. Why? I don't know. Who cares? It works. Okay, normal boot. I squared C. Refresh. Boom. We see our devices. Amazing. Let's go ahead and configure them. So we can throw something on the screen right away. And if you go to the uh, ESP Easy website, it shows all kinds of things you can show on the screen with these little sort of macros and stuff. So you can do uptime, system time, IP, really cool stuff. So I like to see the IP, percent IP, and then how about just a little special message? Great. Let's update the screen every five seconds just for immediacy. Submit that. We take a look. We can see the screen rebooting. I always forget this. We want to do rotation too. They kind of set it up that you're going to probably want to rotate it. There we go. It's flipped over. Great. Give it a second here and let's see. If our message shows up, I'm going to just keep going, configure a BME 280. So I just go to another device. You do have to put in an index here, I've noticed. You do have to give it a name. I like a little precision. I'm going to add a decimal. I'm going to rename this temp, um, press, press. Submit. If I go back to devices, you should see the readings show up here. Delay. I think this is the frequency of how often you read the sensors. Let's dial this down to, again, like 5, just for the sake of our demo here. No, not done yet. Let's go ahead and say send data while we're in here. This means we're going to send the data to ThinkSpeak. We'll get there. Still not it. Okay. Well, on our screen, we do have our IP address now. Let's go ahead and say what we want to do for the other stuff. Temp. We want to show temp. Temp. And that's in degree C. Humidity. So you put sensor name, hash, the field ID, 
whatever it was called. <laughs> in millibars, so this is, it was BME 280, yeah. Okay, let's see what happens. Back to devices. Do we have a reading yet? Hey, look at that, we have a reading. Just in time to display it on the screen. Very cool. So, this is currently located in America. So we need to show this at American temperature. Let's, let's be honest here. Celsius is for weirdos. The very awesome thing of this frame, uh, firmware, I keep saying framework, you can put in formulas in here. So we can go ahead and put the translation to degrees Fahrenheit. And then go update the label on our screen. It's just amazing how simple this is. They did an amazing job on this framework. Degrees F, beautiful. Now we're ready to send some data to ThingSpeak. Let's go ahead and sign up. They don't really validate, which is nice. So in ThingSpeak, we create a channel. That's what I did really quick there. I clicked New Channel button. Let's give it a name. And for whatever reason, Field 1 always comes over blank. So we're going to do these three for temp, humidity, pressure. Go ahead and save it. Go to API keys. And this is what we're looking for. Back to our ESP Easy config. And that's where protocol here is. Who do you want to send the data to? Generic HTTP is also really cool. So we want things speak. We're going to use a host name. The page kind of reloads. So this is api.thingspeak.com. Put in our API key. I think that's right. API.thingspeak.com. I'm going to copy and paste. Did I mess that up? No. Great. Let's dial down our frequency here just for the demo purposes. Can we make it six? Reasonable number. Our screen is now showing uh, degrees Fahrenheit, by the by. Very cool. And if we go to our private view, look at that, we already have a data point coming through. How awesome is that? Not quite 15 minutes. Could have been 15 minutes, but I think we did pretty good here. And there's another data point. So for 15 bucks, and if you got 15 minutes, you can throw together one of these amazingly powerful ESP8266 devices with a BME280 Bosch sensor. Thanks for watching.